Warning. Anime Out of Context contains spoilers, explicit language, and general tomfoolery. Neither of our hosts are experts on any topic, and you should not take their opinions as such. Listen at your own discretion, and enjoy. As an addendum to our usual warning, today's subject is borderline pornographic, and the cast's discussions concerning it are equally adult. If you do not want to hear such topics, you may want to skip this episode. We all know Remington wishes he could. Now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I commit seppuku or however else weebs express their grief. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Alright Remington, I've been on a bit of a kick lately if you haven't been able to tell. Oh, this is never gonna go well. Well, ever since Halloween ended Remington, I've been just a little sad in some ways. Uh huh. You know, Halloween's one of my favorite times of year because of all the different horror elements, all of the amazing costumes and creativity that is displayed. It's one of a kind. It's a fantastic holiday. Maybe the best one. Agreed. And you know what makes Halloween even better? Monsters. Oh, of course. Monsters. Yep. We have visited quite a few of those. Yeah. And because I'm on a bit of a monster kick and because we got a couple recommendations for an anime, I felt that we needed to discuss some more monster anime. You know, broaden our horizons a bit. I am concerned about this. What's the matter, Remington? Our last monster one was fine. Technically, our last monster one was Attack on Titan, if you think oh, about it. Oh, no. Our last monster one was not fine at all. <laughs> <laughs> the monster one before that one was fine. Yeah. And almost every other monster one has been universally terrible. Now, is that anime's fault, my fault, or Dracula United's fault? Hey, hey, whoa, don't drag Dracula <laughs> United. Dracula United is here for the accurate and honest representation of monsters which we have seen maybe only a single time with interviews with monster girls and you seem to really enjoy that show as well it was wildly human and i am a sucker when things are even maybe a little too human for their own good yeah and believe it or not remington there are actually multiple anime who have tried to do the very similar thing of humanizing uh, monstrosities beasts uh spirits things like that my company is perking its ears, Sean. Yeah. Some have done it really well, much like interviews with Monster Girls. Of course. Some not so much. Things like Rosario Vampire come to mind. Is that an example of one that tried to do that? It didn't feel like it tried to humanize or normalize monsters. It just tried to fetishize monsters. That's very different. But they were all in the shape of humans, Remington. I guess really buxom humans <laughs> buxom underage humans uncomfortably so yeah so this time around i thought i'd try and lean something a bit more similar to interviews with monster girls if you haven't seen that one give it a watch it's cute it's adorable it's quite enjoyable it's one of the few that gets the remington stamp of approval yeah and i actually found a very similar show that came out uh, just about a year or two before this one ah interviews with monster boys you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing. <laughs> but no, Monster Boys haven't actually been a very prevalent thing in anime, from what I can tell. The most that gets uh, discussed is things like in Rosario Vampire or monster anime about actual monsters. All right, well, that's just another talking point for Dracula United. <laughs> so I found a monster anime that is very similar plot-wise. Okay. All right. So picture this. You are a, a young man who is pretty well off. Your family makes a decent amount of money, but they're rarely at home. And you're just... Y your family makes a decent amount of money because the dad owns a, owns a company, but then the dad dies, and then you inherit the company, but only if you marry a girl that's hopefully not your sister. We've been here before! <laughs> no, 
no, no. There's no incest in this show. I promise. Okay. Don't be ridiculous, Remington. They would never put incest in a proper show they put on TV, would they? Oh, yeah. That's such a ridiculous thought. Uh-huh. God damn anime. Yeah. But uh, fresh out of high school, young Kimihito Kurusu uh, is living a rather quiet and unremarkable life post-graduation. When out of nowhere, there's a knock on his door and a business suit men in black looking lady opens the door and says, Hey, I'm here to drop off your new rooming partner. Is that how that works? Apparently. And she just dumps a Lamia in his lap. Of course, a Lamia, which I am very well acquainted with and know with an encyclopedic knowledge. Are you not familiar with the mythical creature that is a Lamia? I'm so familiar with the Lamia, Sean. What type of creature is it, Rem? Well, see, you just separate it into its two parts. So first, there's lamb, so it's a very lamb-like creature. But then you have Ea, or E-A, so it's actually a money-grubbing scumbag. So it's just a lamb who likes to scam. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I would watch that anime, though. (laughs) Money-grubbing farm animals. I would watch the hell out of that. All right, so uh, perhaps that was just my interpretation of a Lamia. What what do you think a Lamia is, Sean? (laughs) Well, what I think, and what a lot of these books I've read, because I actually did research onto the monsters themselves, and in my research, I found out that a Lamia, if it wasn't obvious by the anime, is a mythological woman whose entire upper half is a normal human woman, but her lower half is the body of a snake. Oh, okay, so like a Gorgon. So a lot of people will interpret Medusa as a Lamia, but Medusa changes depending on who tells the story and what era the story is represented in, and a lot of times Medusa is just a woman with snakes for hair and things like that. But a Lamia is always a top half of a woman and bottom half of a snake. Oh, okay. So I understand. So no stone transformation. It's just a very bestial snake woman. All right. Because in this world, Remington, that you have been uh, deposited into is a world that is basically the exact same as ours. Big difference is, is monsters exist. Because... All right. Similar premise as to a few before. Yes. We're in today, but monsters. Exactly. And the Japanese government is slowly trying to integrate monsters into human society. Sound familiar? Ah, Japan, notoriously progressive. Very. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, we're never allowed to go to Japan now. Uh, (laughs) Probably not. I can't wait till that day comes. (laughs) All right, so the snake woman pops up, and presumably I would be like, oh, yeah, snake woman, because that's a thing now. Naturally, you're a little confused, because you're just a dude living at home alone, and some random person you've never met before has just decided to say, hey, this Lamia is staying with you. As and I give it five scenes before I suddenly want to fuck the snake woman. <laughs> is this how you interpret snake women? Well, if I'm in an anime, I feel like I don't have a choice. Well, it's not quite like that, unfortunately. Oh. Well, fortunately, I should say. So... He gets deposited this Lamia, and of course he's a little confused and trying to figure out, wait a minute, no, I'm not I'm not hosting any monsters. Uh, I get that you're trying to integrate monsters into society, make them more, you know, cohesive with humans, but I did not sign up for this. Why are you bringing her here? Would you like to know the reason? Sure. Is, is it like his sister? No. Okay. The reason is because the men in black looking lady screwed up the address... <laughs> she she was just like, oh, I'm sorry, it was your neighbor. Okay, so here's how that gets resolved. Oh, my bad, this is the wrong address. You're right, all right, have a great day. Don't be ridiculous, Remington. We wouldn't have an anime story if that was the case. Of course not. So he gets strapped with this Lamia, whose name is Mia. Oh, of course. Because, uh, you know, that's creative. Those Japanese anime names. <laughs> Yeah, Mia the Lamia uh, is 
dropped in this guy's lap. And the story kind of evolves from there. Uh, going through the lifestyles of different Monster Girls, more get introduced as the series progresses and the different difficulties and troubles integrating into human society. But as opposed to a high school setting like Interviews with Monster Girls, uh, this one is a bit more of a general social thing. Okay, I feel like I'm not going to like it. Why is that, Remington? Well, I liked the last one, and just statistically, it seems improper, as well as it feels like it's going to have similar flaws to previous monster anime that we've had, and statistically, it's unlikely to have as many of the redeeming qualities. I mean, that is a possibility, but there are quite a few redeeming qualities in this show. By the way, the show is a show called Monster Musume. Monster Musume. Yep, or Everyday Life with Monster Girls. They just really like saying Monster Girls. Yeah, Monster Girls have become a rather big thing since 2015, which is when this anime came out and onwards. Because this anime is insanely popular for a lot of things. Oh, no. It's about a 7.23. Whenever things are insanely popular, that means they're people with pitchforks, Sean. Honestly, Remington, I feel like... This is going to be one of those animes where your opinion will be displayed to the world and people will be like, you know, that's pretty reasonable. Oh, okay, fantastic. So you can tear it apart as much as you like, but honestly, I think you will find lots of deep and intimate... Okay, Remington, I'm sorry, I'm lying to you. I knew it. I can't keep it in, Remington. I watched this whole series twice over, just to be certain. Oh god, Remington, I can't... Oh god, I can't take it anymore. You're, you're having just a breakdown. Is it that bad? Oh, it's not good. Oh, son of a bitch. Remington, I was going to try and do my usual thing, you know, where I, I I butter you up a bit. I try and get you excited for an anime. I try to mislead you in a lot of ways. And I was going pretty well. But as soon as I started talking about the good qualities in the show, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I mean, there are some good qualities, but they're so minor and minuscule it doesn't matter. So the show is as I described to you, Remington, but <laughs> the reason this show is popular is because it's a bit of a meme. Oh? So Everyday Life with Monster Girls, or Monster Musume for short, which I will continue to call it because it's much easier and it's much more identifiable, and I like interviews with Monster Girls, so I don't want to kind of compare the two as much <laughs> yeah. as I can. Even though the plots are so goddamn similar, it's hard not to. Oh. Uh. Ooh, boy, this show is not great. In fact, it's so not great, we actually had a counter-recommendation for it. A counter-recommendation. Yeah, when I got the recommendation email for interviews with Monster Girls, he was so excited to describe it because he realized our grievances with Rosario Vampire and agreed with a lot of them, and which is why he recommended interviews with Monster Girls. I was grateful for that. Shortly after that, though, I got a follow-up email saying, Wait, I don't- I want to make sure you're not confused. You're not showing him Monster Musume. <laughs> that anime is horrible. I want you to show him this one. Oh my god. And I was like, oh yeah, no, I know the difference. Okay, so this is terrifying. Yeah. Why has it become a bit of a meme? Well, first before we get into that, I'm gonna list off the recommendation. So the anti-recommendation was from our fellow who calls himself just Anonymous. Yep, good old Anonymous. Yes. So we got a couple of minor recommendations for this show because they thought it would be hilarious for you to watch this show, not realizing that I'd have to watch this show multiple times. <sighs> but we did get at least one email uh, from a fellow who's sent in recommendations before. This is another one from his list. He listed it under Anime to Troll Remington with. I don't like that as a category. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious, personally. You listeners out there who are like, oh, Remington's pain, it's so funny. You hurt me deeply, which I guess is your point and your goal, in which case, congratulations, you sadistic sons of guns. Yeah, and thanks, guys. You, you realize my I have to watch these things. Though I have a higher tolerance for a lot of anime bullshit, doesn't mean I'm immune to anime bullshit. Okay, here's here's my hope, Sean. Yes. So, I've loved Terrible with Forest Fairy 5. I've loved Mimi with Nico Nico Knee. Maybe? Maybe. Just maybe. I can enjoy 
monster mimosas or whatever it was actually called. I would drink <laughs> a monster mimosa in a heartbeat. I will let my basic white girl fly with that. I ooh, that would be fantastic. Uh, but the gentleman who recommended to us was a fellow by the name of Zoth. Okay, Zoth and Anonymous. Yes. Anonymous told us not to do this, whereas Zoth told us to do it. So you'd think they'd cancel each other out. <laughs> but all the in-person recommendations kind of lean it towards having to do it. I, I like how everyone knows that I'm going to hate this. Yeah. And I, I don't want to watch any more of it because this will be my third run-through of what we're seeing. It's not great. So to cope, Remington... I'm going to do one of my favorite things. I'm going to go into super sadist mode. Oh, Sean. And I'm just going to be laughing the whole time. <laughs> Watching you. <laughs> you, you, you. You're just wanting to see my world burn. It's the only way I'm going to be able to cope with this, Remington. Is it a healthy coping mechanism? God, no. You, you've broken, Sean. You're supposed to be... At least under the illusion of an objective teacher. This is not being an objective teacher. I am aware of that, Remington, but I didn't think I was going to have to do this anime for at least a year. Because it's on the extreme end of things. Oh, no. And you should at least be grateful to me, Remington. You know why? Why? Because I'm showing you the censored version. Oh, no! And with that, let's go watch some episodes of Monster Musou Men. <laughs> We are back after watching a whole three episodes of Everyday Life with Monster Girls or Monster Musume. Remington, you don't look so good, buddy. Uh. Oh, you can do better than that. I want to hear exactly how you feel right this very second, Remington. Uh. Better, better. So, three episodes is our bare minimum for any series, uh, with the exception of Helsing, because those were 40-minute episodes apiece. And you're wondering, well, why didn't I watch to the point? Or rather, why didn't I force him to watch to the point where you can see all the different girls and all their different personalities and how they intermingle and all their clever interactions? It's because that doesn't exist. So I figured I'd save Remington some torture for later, and just show him the bare minimum, because quite frankly, the suffering I got was delicious. Uh. <laughs> oh, Remington. Come now, you have words, use them. I can't wait to see what your thoughts are for this show. Sean? Yes. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd like to keep the relationship professional, Remington. Uh, any professionality has been squandered. It has been ruined. It has been stomped upon after this atrocious mess. But, Remington, this was a recommendation from our loyal fan base. This was a recommendation to hurt me. This was a recommendation because it's terrible. Because our fans knew that I would hate it, which... Spoiler alert, I do. And so they were like, oh, you know, it'd be really funny and would get Remington all riled up was if we show him this anime. So what I'm getting is a subtle hint of pure hatred from you, Remington. It's faint, but the shaking palms and the rage that is filling your eyes, which are now bloodshot, I think you're a little upset. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to uh, catch on to those subtle signs. I'm glad that you can recognize me with the close friend that you are to me, uh, at least for now. We'll see how long that lasts with every single week of the anime as we grow further and further into despair. Oh, dear God, this was an abomination. The only reason I am even still here is because I have an obligation to our listeners. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be gone. I would have left. I wouldn't be here to record this because I don't want to. I want to be done with this. I never want to think about this anime ever again. And hopefully you won't have to, Remington, because I'd like to block it out as well. But since I don't have that option, having seen it three times now, we're just going to have to get into it bit by bit. So, Remington, Monster Musume, I gave you a brief description of it before we started, and it was 
true. All of it was true, but it was very bare bones. Let me tell you right now, Monster Musume is a combination of three things. Only three? That we've seen, at least. Okay. First, Rosario Vampire, rough right. start. Very bad rough start. Two, Nakaemo, rough start. Well, I mean, there was no sister fucking. Yeah, but there's still the whole borderline hentai, you gotta get married, but you can't have sex with any of them for reasons, whole spiel. Okay, and the third thing? And the third thing, and this is its only mildly redeeming quality, it's also the one that's the least present, Umaru-chan. Fucking what? Let me explain. Oh, you better, because <laughs> I'm about to blow a gasket. Just in the fact that it really, really, really likes referencing other types of media and other things around it in pseudo-clever ways. And I would argue that the only half-decent thing this show did in any way was its interludes and references to other anime or other mediums, which many still fell flat, but those were very much the peaks among this trench, this absolute valley of an anime. I thought a few of them were decently well done, and a couple of them showed that these creators could put thought into something. That's as close to a compliment as I'm going to get for the rest of the episode. Yeah, because the problem is, is when they did think, it was trying to force all the blood out of their massive throbbing erections back into their skulls, and it just wasn't effective. It was absolutely terrible. Let me say this right now. I'm going to briefly describe the first two minutes. And if we wanted to, we could end the podcast there because it truly summarizes everything. So the first two minutes, Sean, it starts off and you see a bed and bland bitch protagonist looks over at cute anime girl supposed to be doing cute things and she calls him darling which is the only thing he's called besides master through the entire goddamn anime and he's like oh you gotta wake up and then it shows that she has her super snake tail wrapped around him because it's mia the lamia all right cool and she's like oh but i'm cold-blooded so i need you to warm me up and then she pushes him into her boobs because of course she does because that's the only interaction that one human can have with another that has boobs and then he's like oh no i'm being strangled to death so he decides he grabs the end of her tail and she's like "Ooh!" and then sean sean oh my god sean he just jacks off the tail as if it were her female snake penis he jacks off her tail but she's female remington she can't have a penis what uh she's female so she can't have a penis remington but no that's how you you oh. you, you you get the girl and you jack off her penis uh, uh oh no remington is is it wh oh god Oh, oh, honey. Is is it is there some uh, what? Oh, we're gonna talk about this after the podcast. Uh... <laughs> Ooh. So that scene tells you everything you need to know about this abomination of an anime. It's rough. It hurts, and it is just sex jokes. It's sex and sex jokes. Ha ha. Get it? It looks lewd, but it's not. Now here's something that's actually lewd. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh dear God. Kill me now. And the thing is, a good sex joke can be hilarious. There's not a single good sex joke in this entire show. No, because you can see them all coming from an absolute mile away. And it's so bad and so ridiculous. And then you get to the point where you quickly wonder, well, why doesn't bland bitch protagonists just have sex with the monster girls? That's where things get interesting. So I left the plot intentionally vague in the first bit because... Well, like I said, I was going to try and toy with your emotions, trick you, and deceive you like I usually do. But obviously I had trouble doing that because it's hard to keep a straight face when you're talking about this show. Uh, which is why I'm thankful we don't have video recording while we're doing this. But 
the main plot point of this show is he is playing host to a variety of monster girls as a experimental procedure to, you know, integrate them into society. But there's a catch. Humans and monsters are not allowed to physically harm each other. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, that just makes sense. Assault is wrong. Violence is very wrong. What's the issue with that? You know what that includes, Remington? Apparently, Sean, harming one another includes popping their cherry, which means that they absolutely cannot have sex, which means just don't even think about all of the obvious dilemmas that would come from them legally having to check this sort of thing, or all of the obvious dilemmas of the ways a girl can pop her cherry without having sex in any way, shape, or form. Don't worry about any of that, because then you couldn't have a plot. And so the whole reason they can't have sex is because for some weird, really convoluted explanation, it's against the law, I guess. Yeah, which you feel like in today's society, if monster girls were a thing, or monster guys for that matter, you feel like there would be some kind of movements to promote relationships between these different species. Especially when, if you have two consenting individuals who are like, yeah, sure, that doesn't seem too harmful, but apparently molesting and rape of the guy is perfect. Girls get it? So they can molest anybody they want. Who needs consent? But Remington, they're not just cute anime girls. They're cute anime girls whose bits are different. Like, you've got, you've got a snake woman, a Lamia, which, by the way, very bad representation of a Lamia. You've got a harpy girl, very bad representation of a harpy. And you've got a centaur, which, by the way, a if you're having issues thinking about scootily pooping with a centaur, what? Don't. Don't. That's my story for that. Oh, should I fuck a centaur? No. Because no. that... You can love the centaur. The centaur can be the love of your life. But the second you start going, you know, very Farmer Joe on it, it's just not going to be a good time. No, don't stick your dick in horse vaginas. <laughs> I feel like that's a universal rule we can just all agree on in basically every circumstance with very few to possibly none at all exceptions. And while we're at it, let's add the snake uh, as well, because snake cloaca, not a good experience. They were really emphasizing that snake ass, which is just such a weird concept. But now that we're on the topic, let's do one of your favorite things. Let's talk about the character, Sean. Yes, because this is a character-driven show, Remington. You I guess. <laughs> No, you think it would be a show about characters in the world and their interactions with modern society, but no, it's only their interactions with this one dude who is inconsequential. Like Remington, we call him Darling. We call him Darling, we call him Master. What's his name? Just like the show, you mentioned it once, and Lord knows I can't remember it. What letter did it start with? I'm, I'm going to go with my anime rules. I've mentioned these anime rules. It's got to be a K or an M. It is a K. Oh, it's always a K. <laughs> and I'm going to say the name right oh, now. Oh, wait, wait. His last name was Caruso. Yes. Oh, I'm a genius. I remember because I was thinking of Western media. All right. And what's his first name? It's not Karumo. That's a different <laughs> one. <laughs> That's the succubus from Ozaria Vampire. <laughs> I got monsters on the brain now. As you should. No, it's Kimihito. Oh, Kimihito, of course. How could I ever forget? Kimihito Caruso. Yeah, no, uh, doesn't matter. You'll just call him Darling like the rest of us, and begrudgingly, because Darling is reserved for someone you care about, or like if you're doing a southern thing, you know, a Darling. How you doing, Darling? Yeah, it's, it's subtle, it's sweet, it's nice. And yeah, all we need to say about him is... Go rehash literally the dozens now of rants I've had about land bitch protagonists. Yeah, that. Just that. You could just watch the Rosario Vampire episode and you'd be set. Yeah, you would hear so many of my same criticisms. Except he's actually kind of less of a bitch compared to some of those. I guess? Because, I mean, to be fair, this guy goes through a shit ton of abuse and he's still fucking alive. Though I really wish he wasn't. So that's all that needs to be said about Bland Bitch Protagonist. 
almost nothing notable about him. He has hardly any character whatsoever. Oh, he has White Knight moments as well. Which... Oh, the White Knight moments. So creative. What a trope that we've never seen in anime before, especially mm. displayed in our bland bitch protagonists. Yeah, so let's talk about the girls, the supposed reason you watch this show. Now, three episodes in, you only get to introduce to three of the monster girls. You know what? Even though we've only seen three, let's talk about all of them, because I feel like I can do a pretty good guess of the next three as well. I have a feeling you're probably right, but let's start with the ones we know. Let's start with uh, the primary, the, I suppose you could call her best girl, even though nobody, she's not the best at anything, she's just the first one that shows up. Let's talk about Mia the Lamia. All right, so with Mia, she's super energetic. She's just your standard, I want to bang the bitch male protagonist. Neat, cool. If he ends up marrying one, it's going to be Mia. Obviously, it's going to be Mia. There's literally no other option other than Mia. She doesn't even have a strong character besides wanting to bang the bland bitch protagonist. And this isn't saying that she is just a trope. She's hardly even a trope. At least Rosario Vampire tried to pretend they had characters. Oh, but wait. She's incredibly jealous of the other monster girls. Yeah, sure. That's a character trait that can define a whole character. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I'm slipping. Back to sadist mode. <sighs> so, Remington. Yeah, anything else you'd like to add about the Lamia? Nope, that's all there is to her. Oh, you don't want to talk about her curious situation with underwear? Uh, you know what? If, if, if our listeners are that curious about her curious situation about underwear, they can watch the goddamn anime. You'd condemn them to that horrible fate? They condemned me to this, Sean! I love it. It's delicious. Uh, speaking of not delicious, though, let's talk about our next character. Let's talk about Poppy the Harpy. She's bird-brained, get it? Okay, but what about her character, Remington? She's a bird-brained lolly, get it? Well, surely there has to be more to it, Remington, come on. Didn't you enjoy all of the deep, interesting encounters we got in those three episodes? She's ditzy and like a child. Get it? Nothing else? She looks as if she's 13, and she's stupid. Get it? Well, let's move on, shall we? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's nothing else. It's so bad. Uh, let's talk about uh, Surya. Centara? Centuria. C C she, she, Cilia. She, she went by a few names. And centaur bitch. Centaur bitch. She was possibly my least favorite of the three girls because she was really, really boring. She's noble-ish. She has honor-ish. She comes from this long chain of centaurs who are focused on loyalty, I guess. Does any of that matter? No. She has big tits that break physics. That's her character. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and what and a single a single breasticle, as it were, bigger than her entire fucking skull. And as soon as you get them moving, you can create a perpetual motion on her breasts alone because they exude far more energy than are given to them. I feel like if you were to if you were to get them shaking and then press her against a building, the building would vibrate to the point it would be like a category 5 earthquake and it just collapse right then and there. If we have any artists who are listeners, could they please draw anime titty physics powering a perpetual motion machine or any type of generating resource? If you could just draw that, I would be greatly amused. And if you put Sean's head on the big titty anime girl, even better. I feel like you're throwing some hostility at me there, Remington. Fuck you, Sean. <laughs> This wasn't me! This wasn't me entirely. But you were the one who decided on it. Hey, I'm not the only one that decided on it, alright? I had several outside sources that helped me choose this anime. Alright, let's continue with the girls I didn't see. Okay, 
So the next girl you would have seen is the slime character. Her name is Sue, as in Sulaimu. Oh my god. That's the closest I can get to figuring out how they figured out her name. Because it is, if you listen to the other names, Centaurus, Lamia, Mia, and Pappy, Harpy, they all sound very similar to their monster type. Okay, let me try and deduce the slime girl's character. So, she's slime, so she might be, like, sort of worried about being gross and messy. So, maybe she is the character who's self-conscious, even though she has big tits as well. And, oh no, she gets such a mess everywhere, whoops. Sort of like that. Maybe klutzy or self-conscious, something along those lines is where I'm framing Sue. You're giving her too much character, Remington. Oh, damn, no. All right. Uh, She's slippery, then. (laughs) (laughs) Let me revise that. So, Sue, uh, thankfully I have several descriptions for these characters because it's literally less than a paragraph. It's not much. Are you familiar with what a Kenku is? Uh, I am, yes. So, Kenku, D&D creatures who are their crow people, and they can only repeat what they've been told. Basically, so Sue is a slime, and she tends to cling to and copy Poppy. Oh, fuck. Yeah, she can uh, copy speech word for word in the same pitch and tone as others, and she can shapeshift to become, like, other beings, uh, and leaves, but she leaves distinct traits to distinguish her from others, like her little slimy antenna. Okay, cool, neat. Let's move on. That's literally her whole personality, because it, it, she's, she's a bad Kenku. She's a bad Kenku player character, is what she is. Okay, okay. Then let's talk about the next girl you meet, which, if I'm not mistaken... We're not, we're not talking about the external monster girls, because there's, like, seven or eight other monster girls in this show. We're only talking about the harem. Yeah. There is the mermaid... Oh, okay, yeah, there was a mermaid. Keep yeah. forgetting she's a mermaid. Yeah, uh, fuck if I can pronounce this. Maruni Lorelei. Oh, but of course. So, let me try and deduce her character. So, she's a mermaid, so water, there's gonna be so many wet jokes, obviously, dear God. Trying to think, uh, mermaid, so she's going to be maybe a bit glamorous and, uh, a bit pretty, maybe even a bit ditzy. Not really. Ah, damn. Oh, for two. Yeah, so Merune Lorelei, or Meru for short. I would have gone with Lorelei personally because that's actually kind of a decent name. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like mermaid, Sean. Yeah. It is, she is a mermaid that is bound to a wheelchair. Oh? Well, because there's no water, so she can't get around. What? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're a mermaid and you can only move around in the water, you're not going to be able to get around on land. That's ridiculous. You need to have someone push you around in a wheelchair. Does this mean I'm an ableist shitlord for already hating her? No. You're just an ableist shitlord generally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and her personality is described simply as warm with an air of royalty about her. Cool. All right, next character. Yeah, and she's obsessed with tragic love stories. Uh, yeah, you know that character? The character is like, oh, but in this book, it's like this. And we will run off into the wind, except you'll be pushing my wheelchair because I'm a fish and have no legs. Uh, she can die. It, probably. Fish out of water and whatnot. Now for the last character, which is easily the most what the actual fuck blizzard character. This is the spider bitch Rachnera Arachnera. Oh my god, these names. Okay, so this one I'm framing using bird brain as an example. She has to be a Black Widow type character, right? Right? Basically, actually. Finally, I get one right. Yeah, so she is a mythical creature called an arachne, which is... (laughs) Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's a uh, woman with the lower body of a giant spider basically which ah for those who don't know sean is severely phobic of spiders severely and the idea of having affairs with a giant one it how would that even work to start with i don't want to 
I don't want to think about spider vaginas. I just don't. <laughs> so all of these characters are really bad, and all of their relationships with each other are really bad. And something that I've noticed happens again and again and again with so many anime that we've seen is that when it comes to any type of sexual relationships or implications, they are always done in a wildly immature way. There aren't characters capable of having mature romantic or sexual interactions. We could probably count on one hand how many we've seen in all 30 some episodes we have done so far and it's so frustrating to see these wildly unhealthy immature toxic dynamics that are then praised because oh cute anime girl and literally no other reason and I understand here I am bringing my real world ethics into this two dimensional fuckery but still I think it needs to be said but that's not the most egregious sin of this show, Sean. What's the most egregious sin, Remington? I can't wait to hear it. At one point, they're talking about some lovey-dovey bullshit, and the main character, he has the audacity to say, oh no, that's just some manga cliche. <laughs> oh god, the time they tried to be self-aware with their manga bullshit, which is they try to do it several times throughout the show, but... This is just like Rosario Vampire. You can't just say, no guys, look at us, we're bad, get it? And then pretend that that makes it okay that you're bad. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Just by acknowledging you're bad doesn't make you good. That self-awareness doesn't get you very far when you don't back it up. You can say, yeah guys, we get it. But if you never change, if you never do anything about it, if you never show that you truly understand, then what's it all for? And so we just get back to that first goddamn scene, Sean, where I argued we could end the second part of the podcast right then and there. It's so absurd. It's so obscene. It's lewdness for lewdness sake, and I have ranted plenty before about gratuitous sexuality and how ultimately it dilutes every other element that you could possibly have in a product. The one redeeming feature-ish, maybe, sort of, is sort of its references, I guess, which it tried to put some decent effort into to, but those are just peaks upon Mariana's trench far deep down into the Earth's crust till we reach the goddamn core and melt away. And at this point, Sean, that is a sweet relief. So what you're saying is you want to go watch some more episodes. Mm, you know what, Sean? Hell no. Dear God, no. Please, Sean, even if they send emails, Sean, do not make me watch more. Well, Remington, I do not want to watch any more of this show, even if it kills me. But I'm at the mercy of our fan base, Remington. No, Sean, don't listen to the masses. Anime fans don't know what they want. All they know that they want is for me to be in pain. I can at least promise this. If tomorrow I got a uh, several hundred emails saying, make him watch more, make him watch the whole 12 episode series. It's only 12 episodes, by the way. Only 12 with the possibility for another season, which I don't want to think <laughs> no. about. I don't want to think about. I don't think it'll ever happen, but there is that possibility. I would not do it to you for at least a year. Ugh. At least a year, maybe two, if I can avoid it. Okay, let's wrap it up. <laughs> so I have to ask one more time, Remington. Should we go watch some more episodes of Monster Musume? Fuck you, Sean. Maybe later. Thank you so much for tuning in to our mutual suffering. We really appreciate it. If for some reason you'd like to hear more of us, or if you just want to spread the love, drop a review on whatever platform you listen on, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, or even better, spread us through word of mouth. That's the best way to grow. And if you would like to contact us directly, whether it be for comments, questions, feedback, or recommendation, then you can send an email over onto animeoutofcontext at gmail.com. Once again, 
Thank you so much for tuning in, and please, God, no more horse pussy.